Hello. I'm back. We're back. You might be wondering, why am I staring at the town hall? And it's because of these two little missing textures. No, I'm just kidding. It has nothing to do with that. I don't even know if those are missing textures or not. I could be wrong. It could just be blood on the top of the tower. It's a town hall, dude. You know, it, people people gotta make a colony. Shit gets messy. It's a sharp point. Shit happens. Let's get going. We are on year five already. Look at us go. I'm staring at the town hall because we only got this built like two years ago. Three years ago, maybe. Maybe it was year two that we got it built. But I have a sneaking suspicion that we're going to get some nomads this year. And I don't know why. It's probably not going to happen. And I'm just getting myself all worked up. They probably don't even have a place to live anyway. Maybe we don't even want that to happen. But regardless, I think it could happen. We got kids being born. Anything could happen. Uh, names are all obviously randomly generated. I think I can go in and just choose any person. And I thought I could just change their name. Doesn't look like I can do that. That'd be kind of funny. Just give everybody the same exact name or something dumb. I don't know. But you can see there's quite a bit of information on them. Lilip. It's like Philip and Lily combined, and I really like that. Big Rugrats fan. Philip is always my favorite character. Fuck Chucky. Really? John? Jesus Christ. Anyway. Uh, you can see his health. You can see his happiness. You can see his gender. Kind of, you know... A little 2014 of the game to just assume, but, you know, it's 2020 now, the world's a different place, can't make jokes anymore, can't be serious anymore either, people don't like that one. Get down off my soapbox, and you can see his clothing is fair, you can see he's educated, fuck yeah, Lilla, get that bread, catch those fish. Uh, and you can see he's using an iron tool. Obviously, we don't have any other options for tools. You can also go to his inventory. Homeboy is running low right now. Homegirl, maybe? Homie is running low right now. Which is probably why he's going back to his house. He's probably fucking tired from fishing all day. Or he needs some grub. Probably gonna end up eating fish. He is too. <laughs> There's a chance he could eat beans or corn shouldn't eat the firewood if he does I mean that's on him but dude is cooking and eating his catch good on you self-sufficient educated we like you Lilith. you're our favorite person in the game we're gonna be real fucking sad when you're gone you're only 32 seems like you probably got a nice life ahead of you maybe you'll even have a career change stop having to just smell fish all day that'd be Anyway, I also really like these building animations. Uh, obviously, we're not going to see <laughs> any more animations for this one right quite yet, because we don't have any people building this mother. But once all the trees are cleared, once all the material is put down, the first thing that will happen is you'll get this cool little foundation wall. No slab. Who knows if even goes in the ground very deep or has a footer or anything like that. Probably not, but it's, it's our perimeter. It's kind of cool. You can kind of tell that there's going to be like a chimney there because of how thick the brick gets. It'd be a cool little bay window looking place right there on the front. And then a nice little foyer entrance looking area. Uh, and this will eventually be our hospital. It'll look nice too. It'll have that same kind of brick look as the uh, 
town hall, kind of a whitish color, sort of like the school here. So that'll blend right in nice. And then I think, I was thinking at first what we might do for houses is kind of get them just stretched along back here and turn this area into like a little neighborhood. That way it gives us the ability to kind of stretch out this way, maybe around this corner here is where we'll start putting uh, mines. And then quarries are always kind of a pain in the ass to find a nice spot. Uh, I'll show you why. It's because they're fucking huge. So it doesn't look big when it's out there in the woods all by itself, but a quarry takes up pretty much our whole fucking neighborhood right here. They're they're massive, so you really want to find a location that's good where people can get to it, people can mine it easily. You know, there's a lot of houses around it because quarries and mines can both hold 15 workers at a time. Uh, they pretty much never, I, I shouldn't say never maxed out, but it takes a long time before you actually have 15 people going in and out of either of those, but they're really big, so I also, for some reason, just like to keep them by the mines, so they have this industrial sort of look, so what'll probably end up happening is it'll end up out here somewhere, kind of in the ether we'll make a little neighborhood of houses over here, uh, obviously a big stockpile we'll want to put out here but we do kind of want the stockpile to be within radius of you know, being able to get down to the market and the trading post and stuff like that easily don't want to be having people grabbing wood and stone from out here to have to carry all the way down to, you know, either the tools or the woodcutter. That would be very insufficient. Uh, and then you have these mines here, which are pretty cool. They, you know, you have to find a spot in the side of the mountain to put these. They can't just sit, you know, in open land like that. So those are kind of nice, you get a couple of those, you can just kind of stick them right next to each other somewhere. Maybe we won't be able to here specifically, but you get the point. Uh, and that just ends up being a source of collecting iron and stone other than just going out and gathering what's on the ground. Because, I don't know if you know this or not, iron and stone are not renewable resources. Or they are, and I just don't know it yet. I'm not a very smart person. So once we get some people out of the fields here, we'll get this building going again. Looks like we can almost fully score people out. We're going to zoom right in. It's really nice to watch. You'll see them start building. That chick's going to town with that hammer. Dude's going to town with that hot hammer and that saw. And you'll see shortly here, a little frame for the building will pop right up. Oh, look at that. Because it's stone, it kind of ends up with this you know, old military fortress that's been destroyed and abandoned looking thing. And we got the people done work in the corn. They don't really have a spot to be. Stick them back in the blacksmith. Put them back as an herbalist. We'll leave you to his builders. A couple more students, a couple more people born. All good news, we are up to 2,000 food now. So we have found the secret. We got another half heart, so we're going back up on the health as well. Very nice. It's going to be perfect timing for this hospital. Basically, just going to be able to maintain health for the foreseeable future. So that's all looking really good. Let's see, we're at 94%. We'll get this right out of the way so that when this is done being built. Boom. And just like that, we got another little brick building. Like I said, it kind of matches the town hall. Kind of fits right in with the school as well. With the, uh, you know, shingled roof and everything as opposed to the thatch roof. And you can tell it's a hospital because there's a little bus sign. Maybe it's a second school just for math. No, probably not. Uh, so we can see there's no patients 
good sign. We don't want patients. Patients means people are sick. We don't want people to be sick. People are going to get sick. I don't know why. It doesn't matter. So now we have a physician. And again, physician, teacher. They're the two big ones you never want missing. So you always want to keep at least one person as a laborer. Uh, I definitely have had a game before where I had it on a high speed. I was far into the game. I was just kind of doing my thing. I was probably staring at a fucking house like I usually do and just kind of taking it all in. And I had one laborer and my physician and my teacher died like right at the same time. And I'm pretty sure there were no patients at the time, but the physician was the one that got automatically uh, taken over by the laborer and the teacher died and there was nobody to take her spot and I had probably a dozen, dozen or so students at the time and they all just whoop right out to the workforce uneducated. Great that I had 12 workers quickly all at once. Not great that it severely punished my uh, educated population. It's kind of a bummer. Still stings. Pretty sure that ha shit happened like five fucking years ago. But that's why we like this game. Because... No, that's not why we like this game. That's why we don't like this game. Fuck this game, we're out of here. No, I'm just kidding. So we got the hospital up. We got a physician in. We got three laborers. We gotta find something for them to do. They can't just sit around all winter. That is unbecoming of them. We still don't want to get that training post started. Why well, don't we want to get that training post started? Because we don't have enough stone. That's what we're going to do. We're going to take two of these laborers. We're going to set them as builders because I think like we talked about before, builders will do the same thing a laborer will do if they don't have a building tax to get done, but they can do it to a greater efficiency. So if I tell one laborer and two builders to go collect all this stone, get it out of my forester's way. And I tell him to get this iron while they're at it. The builders will collect more at a time than the laborers will. Again, you do run the risk of that fun little story that I talked about where two important people could potentially die right at the same time and only one of them gets uh, replaced, but rolling the dice and banished, baby. Let's go. So I don't know what the max is, so you can zoom out pretty far. It looks like you can basically just get a straight top-down approach on everything. I never really have it to this extent unless my city's really big and even then it's pretty much to just kind of zoom out, get my bearings of where I am and zoom back in. But I typically keep it right about here where everything's visible, easily accessible, but I'm not, you know, up in the clouds. Especially when it starts raining, as you can tell, it gets a little tough to see. Um, I'm also usually never way in here, moving around, doing things, unless I'm specifically scoping something out for some reason. Um, but we're just trying to get a cool angle. Look at this. Look at this nice little neighborhood. It's gorgeous. I love that area. But I also try not to give myself motion sickness by constantly moving the camera around. So as you've been able to tell, I, I like to find these little angles. I'll find one for some reason kind of going off the water like this seems to be my forte for how I like to look at the map. Um, and then as you can see, it kind of, I don't know why you guys are off the wall a little bit there. Veins. Um, no, no, let's not. So we're going to firewood. Definitely need to get some more people. Maybe we'll do that. We'll stick at least another forester in here. That'll keep our wood going. 
dryers talking shit. Hey, 26, dude. God damn it. I was trying to. Whatever. 2 6. 2 6. 2 6. 2 4. 2 3. Let's see how cold it gets in the winter. I assume this is Fahrenheit. I don't know who made this game, but. Pretty sure if it was 22 degrees Celsius, these people would be loving life right now. And it probably wouldn't be snowing. So we're gonna go with, uh, we're gonna go with Fahrenheit. Obviously a nice little forecast, kind of shows you what's going on outside. It's fucking snowing, it's fucking cold. These crazy fools are just hauling ass everywhere they go. So this is working out really well. God damn, that's a lot of innocent. What was the name? Lilip? Lilip. Yeah. You and your fisherman wife. <laughs> Fucking seven year difference between you guys. You got a 15 year old and a seven year old. You guys made a good, good life out of fishing. That's really lovely. Do you have... <laughs> You have an addiction. Okay. Well, in case you get hungry for anything other than a fishing corn, there's a, a storage storage barn two, two houses down from where you live that has over a thousand venison in it. Venison is delicious. You can make jerky out of it. You can make some nice tenderloins. They're not... You gotta work for the tenderloin. Venison's... Whatever. You got berries, you got mushrooms, you got onions, dude. You need to at least grab some fucking onions and roots and make yourself like, I don't know, a nice fish medley or something. You're, you're killing me. <laughs> Whatever. Keep warm. Keep eating that fish, brother. I like your style. You and Jolene. I can't even pronounce your fucking kids' names. It's too late. I'm not, I'm not going there. So we're already in the late winter. Seemed to be another quick episode. Not too many pauses necessary for that one. Got that gathering going up again. All that stone that they just picked up. God damn. Plenty of iron. We're in a good spot. We're in a good spot to do some good things. We got 22 adults. We got 10 students. We're still having kids. I think they might be slowing up on the kids. Maybe another couple houses are in order. If we're going to be building some houses, we might want to get some stuff going so that those people have places to work. Uh, speaking of which, we're going to wait until... A little too soon on that one. thought I could grab it just in time. Uh, the late winter becomes early spring. Thank you. And aside from getting these, let's see, one, two, three, and I want to leave that woodcutter in there. I think we want to leave that forester in there too. I mean, we are looking really good on food. We just kind of want to keep the crops going just because. Uh, but I think what we can probably do, <laughs> I I feel bad. I almost don't want to take a fisherman out because I don't want to fuck up the beautiful thing that Lillard and uh, Lilith, Lilip, Lilip. What am I calling Lillard? Whatever. Lilip and Jolene. They got something going on. They're trying to teach their kids. You know what's going to fucking happen? If Hellsworth is going to get out of school, he's going to be like 16, 17 years old. He's going to have his whole life ahead of him. Educated. Straight and narrow. And he's going to take over the family business. Him and little Lorena. They're going to... They're going to fish their fucking life away. Alright, so we'll take a gather out. We can't, we can't 
mess them up from what they're doing. Then we gotta turn these on. And then before we unpause, before we finish the episode, I guess I should say those backwards if we're not gonna unpause until we finish the episode. Hmm. You know, I don't know how much I like that. My thought is I'm gonna get a pasture going somewhere like right here. It's gonna need to be at least this wide though. As you can see, it creates this little outpost for the end. I don't know what to call it. Anyway, the whole rest of it will be fenced off, and then there's this little trough area. But I don't really like that it's going right up to the edge of the farm. Thank you, Dryer. And that's my time, folks. Um, so we might actually find another spot for him. What we might actually do is, when we get this training post going building a bridge right off the edge of the trading post across here and then turning this area into a couple different pastures because what's going to happen is there's you can see this little bare spot um, where this is all dark there's going to be a building and like a dock there uh, this open spot there's going to be a small pen and that's basically when a merchant comes with farm animals uh, whether it be the sheep the chicken or the cattle you trade for them, they're going to go into here originally. They don't stay there forever, so you can't use that like as a pasture. That doesn't work. But they'll stay there until a pasture opens up that the person working the pasture can then go get them and bring them into that area. So it's nice to have the training post and the pastures close. Just for that reason, you don't want them staying in the training post too long because I think after a while they just kind of take off and become free elves again i don't know but we'll put the bridge right there we're going to use this spot to do some pastures we're going to hold off on doing that for right now but what would probably be a good fit right here is a nice orchard i'm thinking maybe something like eight by six nine by six we want to be able to get at least two of them in there Maybe even three. Yeah, I suppose we could do small orchards. What that's going to do is once you get, you know, three different fruit plants going, you're constantly switching out what's in the tavern for alcohol, and that constant transition also makes the people happy rather than just creating the same beer over and over. People get kind of sick of it. Unless it's an IPA, apparently, then people will just drink it forever and call it everything. Everything IPA. That's going to be my beer. 7.6. Might be a little too big. Let's just do this. We got it paused. There doesn't really need to be a gap in between them. So if we did another 7.6 and then try to do another 7.6 off that, it's not going to work. We're only going to get 5. So... Cancel that and that, and we're going to make those 6x6. Six six. I'm not going to put all three of them there right now because then we're just going to have these little pause symbols or stop symbols all over the place. We don't really want that. But we are going to get this going right away. We're going to put him right over with the crop fields, and that way you'll really be able to tell the distinction once they start getting. Uh, worked that this one isn't going to yield anything for at least the first couple of years uh, and what I usually just do is even in the winter time I'm pretty sure the person working the orchard isn't working maybe they are maybe they're doing something to maintain the trees or whatever but I leave them in year-round because their producing and yielding is so infrequent that I just it's not as easy as the farms where it's just spring to fall every year uh, and I don't bother trying to mess with that. So that does mean we need at least one more person to go work that orchard. Um, and you can see the orchard and the farm. It's all just farmers. They all take up the same type of position. Uh, 
Alright, we're good on food, so we'll just take them from another source of food. Uh, the hunter is really good because they're producing leather as well as uh, the venison, I'm pretty sure. Maybe I'm wrong on that. I'm probably wrong on that. Where have we been getting our leather for? Gathering, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, we'll just take a gather. Whatever. And that gives us our additional farmer. And then I'll get our little orchard going. And within a couple of years, that'll be producing some fruit. We'll be able to do the brewery, and we will probably just switch off between berries and pears from now on until we start doing some more trading. Or any trading at all. Which I haven't started yet. That might be another thing to get going this upcoming year. But we are going to save that for another time. We're looking good. It was, uh, it was another good year, year five. We're on to year six. Sun shining, temperatures rising, the happiness, the health. We're we're on the rise, folks. Thanks, everyone. Later.